In this lecture, we are going to know about concept of nonlinearity in finite element analysis. So basically, we have two types of analysis. One is linear, and other one is nonlinear analysis. So when the structural response or the deformation stress and strain is linearly proportional to the magnitude of the load applied, let's say force, pressure, moment, torque, etc. then the analysis is called linear analysis when the load to the response is not linear then the analysis is called nonlinear analysis consider the example in case of linear analysis the graph between force and the displacement is always linear it is showing with this red color line but in case of nonlinear analysis this curve is always nonlinear so behavior of force can change any time with respect to displacement generally in example of plastics rubber and more complex material these are all nonlinear analysis we need to understand why we perform nonlinear analysis and what are the limitations of linear analysis in linear analysis the load and displacement does not change with respect to time we make assumption that loads and displacements are constant but in real life this is not the actual scenario these values change with respect to time nonlinear analysis is always performed for the small displacement when we apply the load the displacement is very small as compared to the dimension of the bodies similarly the geometry of the body does not change after apply the load and it is valid up to the hooks law so hooks law means it is valid up to the elastic zone so consider this from the stress strain curve we have stress on one side strain on one other side and this diagram is basically for the steel material elastic zone is considered up to this straight line you can see up to this point there is a straight line between stress and strain this is called the elastic zone you can draw a perpendicular here and all the formulas for the stress and strain that are valid are up to the elastic zone so this is called the hooks law which provide the relation between stress and strain if you want to go beyond this elastic zone for called for the complex analysis we also have to consider the other curve as well that is called the inelastic or plastic zone this is plastic this is elastic so there are some methods to define this so now we are going to learn what are different types of nonlinearity so basically we have three types of nonlinearity first one is called the material nonlinearity second one is geometric nonlinearity third one is boundary or contact nonlinearity material nonlinearity to define the material nonlinearity behavior it is caused by the plasticity so plasticity means when you apply the load the dimension of the body does not change it means it does not uh, gets regain its original position so the material stiffness changes as the strain increases can you can consider from this example we have load versus displacement curve here when you consider the load for multiple points like this and you can draw a straight line but in case of nonlinear the curve behave nonlinearly you can see this time the curve is going like this but this curve can also go in other way as well but this is the general convergence curve between load and the displacement so material nonlinearity is defined by the material model that is called the elastoplastic model so in elastoplastic model we consider we have the stress strain curve and in this stress strain curve we have a point here after which the strain hardening starts okay so you can consider that uh, up to point 1 there is elastic behavior this is the point 1 and after that the point 1 the 
material plasticity begins so to find this point of the hardening where the plasticity ends we need to offset it up to this then take the parallel line so you will see this is plastic zone this is the elastic zone so this kinds of curve basically is drawn between true stress and true strain so after that we need to understand the concept of engineering versus true stress and true strain so what is engineering stress consider this example we have a rod here this rod we are pulling with a force f so because of this force this original length l o will change so this is final length l and this is change in length delta l because of this force uh, there will be an stress generated that is given by the formula stress is equal to f divided by original area then we can check the engineering strain that is delta l by l but this engineering strain does not consider one important thing is let's say here we are considering this problem and we are pulling this with a force f after we apply the force f you will see the area of the body also changes this area you can see in this case is this cross sectional area is higher now it has reduced and the length increased the engineering stress does not consider this change in area so that is why we need one more stress term that is called true stress so true stress also consider the change in area and here you can see engineering stress is f divided by a and engineering strain is delta l by l and the true stress is given by force divided by true area so how do we calculate the true area is basically the true area or the actual area this is the area after we apply the load and true strain is given by log final length divided by original length and this is the relation between engineering and true strain so if you want to find out the true strain then it is ln 1 plus engineering strain if you want to find out true stress then sigma t equal to sigma e into 1 plus strain so finally when we define the material nonlinearity we define the curve between true stress and true strain and here you will see plastic and elastic strain here so after we learn about uh, material nonlinearity now let's learn about geometric nonlinearity so in geometric nonlinearity we consider change in geometry as the structure deforms because of the loading and equilibrium condition for example metal forming tire analysis medical devices etc so consider this with a practical example let's say we have a beam bending in case of beam bending we are applying a force onto this beam and it is going to bend like this so this is a small displacement problem so there is no change in the geometry of the bar or beam so in this case we does not consider the geometric nonlinearity but consider the impact or the crash of this vehicle you can see the displacement in this problem are very large so consider this front bumper here or you can see frontal area you can see the deformation is very large and the geometry of the body changes significantly so in this case we also need to consider the geometric nonlinearity effect if we do not consider the geometric nonlinearity it is basically just going to bend in curvature like this so it is not going to show our actual bending effect during the analysis and after that the contact nonlinearity so contact nonlinearity is simple whenever two bodies are in contact you can see here we have this circular body and we have a flat surface these are in contact so there will be some friction between these two body and due to this friction so there will be some load transfer from one body to another 
सो दिस इज कॉल्ड द कॉन्टेक्ट नॉलिनियरिटी और बाउंड्री नॉलिनियरिटी 